Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. The Bay State is stepping up enforcement on a long-standing assault weapons ban. Massachusetts Attorney General Maura Healey announcing a major crackdown on copycat assault weapons in Massachusetts. She says the gun industry has openly defied the law, but tonight a local gun shop says they are busier than ever. It has been so ridiculously busy today. A long line and phone ringing off the hook. Alicia Merritt says it's not always this busy at Pullman Arms. The Worcester Gun Shop's owner says it's because of the Attorney General's ban on copycat assault rifles going into effect immediately. This, this is preventable. This is something that we can end. The Attorney General's office says manufacturers have gotten around the state's ban on assault rifles by making small modifications to guns. They know that, that there is no difference in terms of function. Maura Healy says in Massachusetts, 10,000 assault rifles were sold in the last year, each one nearly identical to the rifle used to gun down 49 innocent people in Orlando. It kind of outraged me that she had the she had to, got to bypass everything, change the law herself, change the ruling of what an assault rifle is. Alex King says he doesn't agree with the attorney general's ruling. He stopped by Pullman Arms Wednesday to buy a gun before it was too late. I think uh, a lot of people are going to be doing the same thing. Pullman Arms is staying open late until midnight Wednesday, so its customers have a chance to come in and buy these weapons one last time. They are buying everything in the store. That is the reaction. Um, because nobody wants to have their rights taken away. The Worcester man who struggled with police officers over a gun has been sentenced to five years in prison. The incident happened in October 2014. Jonathan Beeman was 18 years old at the time. A Worcester police officer pulled him over and noticed a gun in his waistband. Beeman allegedly kicked and punched the police officer as the officer tried to take the gun. The officer yelled out for help and a military officer pulled over to assist. Wednesday, the now 20-year-old pleaded guilty to gun and assault charges. Well, it's day three of an annual camp for city kids. The Worcester Police Gang Unit sponsors the activities, and the goal is to build a relationship between young people and the police. Our Brittany Schaefer has more. It's one of the greatest events we do all year. The Worcester Police Department's gang unit is holding their 13th annual gang camp this week. Wednesday, 100 at-risk children were playing games with officers while forming bonds. Relationships that you have with an officer, they're very trustworthy people. You get to tell them anything you want, they'll listen to you. And it's a great chance for us to spend a week with these kids, talk about positive things, let them see police officers in a positive way. During their week, the kids visit the Ecotarium, the beach, and jail. The campers are ages 8 to 14 and say their experience at the jail was eye-opening. The positive part for me is the jail. Um, it like, shows what you don't want to be in life and like, you kind of want to do like, the total opposite. It got me kind of scared, but it also taught me how to be good in life and keep off the streets. And I do not want to end up like that. They're an extremely influential age group. Uh, we can reach them through many different platforms, whether through sports with leadership and team building development or just through public speakers. The campers are chosen by the Boys and Girls Club. Sergeant Stephen Roach with the Worcester Gang Unit says no matter what background the kids come from, they have the choice to live happy and safe lives. We have uh, people here uh, that are uh, successful in their careers that some of them, maybe they didn't graduate high school. Maybe they, you know, they had some challenges in life and they overcame them to be in the uh, job they're in today. And many staff members were once campers at the camp themselves. I've always been like interested in like giving back to my community, being a part of it and everything. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Baseball and softball fans in Oxford and Charlton have plenty to cheer about. Little League teams from the two towns are heading to regional tournaments after winning state titles. But as our Jennifer Zarate tells us, the teams still need a little more support from their communities. After winning the state championship, Little League teams from Oxford and Charlton are advancing to the regionals this week. However, there's still work to be done off the field as both teams turn to their communities for support. So basically what we're outside doing is trying to raise enough money to get our trip uh, to New Jersey paid for because it's a, it's a big expense for all these parents. The Oxford Senior Little League team also took to social media and created a GoFundMe account. And everyone's really showing up to do, uh, to do their part to help us. It's, uh, 
it's overwhelming. It's been a great, great experience for these kids. It's a once in a lifetime shot. Coach Peretta says he's been coaching most of the boys since they could barely pick up a bat. Ever since we were knee high to a grasshopper, I mean, it's been forever. And that's what I tell these kids. It's one step at a time, one battle at a time, one play at a time. Stay focused and let's get after this thing. Charlton coach John Snyder says his junior division team is looking forward to regionals this year after winning four state titles in a row. This year, this is the team that we think that can do some damage down there. We can win. The Charlton All-Stars raised more than $900 with the help of local establishments and a GoFundMe account. So it's just exciting that people like actually care about us and like want to donate money to us and it's just exciting. Linda Sokowaski, a Charlton parent, says most of the money raised is for food and a place for the girls to sleep. And so far they've received an outpouring response from the community. We all hope for a win, right? You know, last year was a nail biter. We were almost there, but they're a great team. I think we're ready. I think we can do it. Both teams are looking for a win at this year's regionals, and with the help of local establishments, they'll be able to make their way down. In Charlton, Jennifer Zarate, Worcester News Tonight. Thank you, Jenny. Firefighters battling a brush fire earlier today in the city near Elm Park. Crews were on the scene of a brush fire on Newton Hill. Heavy smoke was visible from Main Street. People who work nearby tell us the fire started burning yesterday. One worker took these photos Tuesday of the brush fire. No word on if it has been completely extinguished. A Dudley man is facing a slew of charges after leading police on a chase through Webster. An officer attempted to pull over 48-year-old Stephen Sheets for speeding on Clebert Avenue around 4 Tuesday afternoon. Sheets allegedly sped away and almost hit a motorcyclist. The officer eventually found his vehicle on Perryville Road, but he was not inside. A short time later, Sheets was discovered hiding behind a building at Stevens Linen on Schofield Avenue, where he works. Police in Connecticut have arrested four people in connection to a shooting in Mansfield three months ago. Michelle Martinez, Maria Fiascarno, Della Acosta Santiago and Ernest Kingsler are facing a number of charges related to the April 6 incident. Connecticut state troopers responded to calls of a large disturbance at 137 Spring Hill Road. When they arrived, the incident was winding down and the people on scene were not being cooperative. A short time later, troopers were notified a woman with a gunshot wound to the head checked herself into a hospital in Wyndham. A Worcester woman is facing multiple charges, including assault and battery with a dangerous weapon after police say she used a dating app to meet men and rob them. Our Andy Madison has the story. It started with the victims using an app on their phone. A man met the woman in person on Decatur Street and followed her to the back of a home where he was assaulted by two men. One of the males was brandishing a knife. The other male punched the victim in the face, knocking him to the ground, and the victim had his wallet, cash, and cell phone stolen. Three days later, Worcester police say it happened again. Same spot, same woman. Based on the reports, it's believed that her involvement was to set up these meets where the male victims would then be robbed by the two male suspects. The police later used the app to set up a meeting with the woman and arrested her. 22-year-old Pauline Marie Stanley Coe was charged with assault and battery and two counts of sexual conduct for a fee. Now police are looking for two suspects and neighbors are on alert. Generally safe, you know, it's uh, I think like any other part of the city, but um, to hear that something was done in, in such a really diabolical way, that's really not cool. The incidents serve as a reminder about the dangers of meeting people online whether it's dating, playing games, or buying and selling items. In this case, police say the two victims were from out of town and didn't know the area they were in. Those we spoke with say it's always better to be safe than sorry. Stay in populated areas, travel with groups, don't go alone. That's the biggest one, don't go alone. <laughs> you have to use common sense at all times and keep your head up. I highly recommend that any of these meets be done in a public area on neutral ground. If someone's not familiar with a particular area, we would definitely suggest that they don't go into an address that they're not familiar with and be aware of your surroundings. Andy Madison, Worcester News Tonight. A public meeting in Worcester to discuss the proposed streetscape project for Main Street. The Worcester Business Journal reports a portion of the street near Clark University will receive $2.3 million in improvements. The work will inc include road and sidewalk upgrades as well as a bike lane between Beaver and Wyman Streets. 
The project will span more than 1,200 feet of roadway. Developers discussed the design at a meeting Tuesday night.